Good day, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to another technical summary video presented by me, Leti Janssen van Vieren. Our topic for today is the guidance on materiality judgment that's been issued by IFRS. So let's just have a look at what this is all about, because there was a lot of hoo-ha in the press, um, and it's been going on for a number of years now. So let's see where this started, what it, what it culminated in, and what we can expect to see in future from IFRS. I'm going to start off by looking at why is materiality important, just the concept of materiality. We know it's one of the pervasive principles of financial statements, so we'll, we're going to look at why it's important. I'm going to go through a quick introduction on this project that they embarked on, looking at the publication that they issued, the most important aspects in a quick little summary, and then I'm just going to refer you, refer you to IFRS Practice Statement 2, which talks about making material judgments, materiality judgments. So looking at my pictures, because you all know by now that I'm a picture person, we are in the realm of accounting. We are not busy with auditing materiality, the concept of audit materiality. We are in the accounting realm. So this is guidance that was issued by the IFRS Foundation, and it deals with materiality. How do we decide how to make material judgments? Lastly, there are links that I've given you to the source documents. And um, yeah, that's it. Let's have a look at some of the abbreviations that we will be looking at on the slides. IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards. NSS everywhere means national standard setters. Now, sometimes those are national accounting standard setters. More often than not, it, they do talk because we are in the accounting realm, and that's why I have put accounting in brackets. So when we're talking about the national standard setters, we are talking about the accounting standards. Right. And then lastly, we are, there is also reference to GOP. Now, I know GOP is no longer allowed as a financial reporting framework in South Africa, but there are still some principles that apply to all accounting information. And that's what, what still is prevalent today. So GARP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principle, we'll, we'll look at how that, that um, is applicable within the realm of, of accounting still. Even though it's not a financial reporting framework that is allowed, remember the only financial reporting frameworks that are allowed for companies now is IFRS and IFRS for SMEs, right, in terms of the Companies Act. Let's have a look at why is materiality important. And I just went and I searched through, and I found these two. Materiality concept is a GAP. So materiality, the concept of materiality is a generally accepted accounting practice. It relates to the importance or significance of an account or transaction. It is something that can affect the influence on the economic decision of a user. And it also allows a cutoff point where the information is no longer useful. So if something is not useful and it's below, on this slide they refer to it as immaterial. Right. And the materiality principle, and it's pervasive, okay, so it does state that all material items must be properly reported in the financial statements, um, but it does allow the company to violate another principle if that item in question is immaterial. And that's where this cutoff point is where it's no longer useful. So when, when is something material? Well, it's considered material if leaving it out or misstating it could influence the decision of the users of the financials. If, the, if it, something has very little or no impact, then it's immaterial. Okay. So a company, this is why it's important because materiality is something the financial statements have got to present. All, all material items have to be properly reported on in the financial statements. And a company must judge whether the information is material. So the information could be reasonably expected to influence the investor's decision when, when they look at determining the recognition, the measurement, the presentation, and disclosure. That's what they have to think about when they compile their financials. So the judgments about materiality are essential to the application of IFRS accounting standards. You can't apply IFRS if, you're, if your information is not materially presented. And if you are not properly reporting on all material items. 
So that's how it is interlinked here. So way back seven, eight, seven, eight years ago, in um, 2017 and 2018, the IASB went and they clarified the definition of what is material. They then published guidance and they published a whole whack of case studies to make it easier for companies to make materiality judgments. If you think as accounting professionals, we have issues understanding materiality, try having the, your clients understand materiality. And this is what's expected of them. In 2021, they then went and issued IFRS Practice Statement 2. That was specifically on how to make materiality judgments. So how does a company, an entity, see whether or not something is material or not, and whether that must be reported on properly in the financials? So what they did since then is they had six national standard setters. They took part in research and they looked at how to apply materiality within their country, within their jurisdiction. Um, and they then responded to this IFRS practice statement. The guidance then that they that the IFRS that IFRS then <clears throat> IFRS Foundation published responds to that call for research. All right. A year later in April 2022, they said, listen, please tell us what you think about this. Let's assess the effect of material of material judgment on investors, companies, auditors and regulators. Let's look at it because materiality is materiality. We know that even as auditors, we now have to refer to that concept in our audit report. So the IFRS Foundation has now published the summary of the NSS's research, all six of them <clears throat> that took place. The summary is now presented, okay, and that's their guidance. So let's go and have a look at what's included in there. The summaries of the reports um, have been issued. It's only eight pages long. It looks like it's in the format of like a, a report. Okay, so who is it? Who issued it? And then they're talking about specifically, it's a summary of evidence that was gathered by the national standard setters on in their jurisdiction, how the guidance is affecting them on how to make materiality judgments. So what did they look at? What did they comment on? Well, mostly they looked at the impact of IFRS Practice Statement 2 on making materiality judgments. They looked at whether or not that IFRS statement is understood within their sector, within their jurisdiction, <clears throat> and do they ever use it? Do the accountants use it? Do the auditors use it? They looked at from an auditing perspective, how is this used when we have to go and assess audit materiality? They looked at the definition of what is material, and they also looked at how to make disclosures more meaningful. So that, in a nutshell, is what was assessed. If we look at a quick um, overview of who participated and where their focus was, we had basically, and these are the names of all the standards boards, but we have Australia, Malaysia, Botswana, China, and then New Zealand. Mexico, um, unfortunately, were not on time to submit the information. So this will be added in at a later stage. But yes, they looked at auditors, materiality judgments, auditors and preparers, materiality judgments. This is what they looked at. Okay. So in a nutshell, they looked at auditors, materiality, as well as preparers, materiality judgment. There's a difference between the two. What did they find? What did they find? Because the report will have each one of those countries each one of those country standards boards um, to say this is what we evaluated, these are some of the comments that we received from, from our constituents, and this is what we have found. So because the IASB's practice statements are not reporting standards, the preparers really don't really perceive practice statement to, to be important. They don't see it the same way that we know if we have an auditing standard in South Africa, <coughs> and Urba, excuse me, Urba issues and uh, uh, SOPS, South African Auditing Practice Statement. That is a pronouncement and it carries the same weight as an auditing standard. That same link is not made between the IASB who issues the IFRS statements and the practice statements. So yes, there was a conceptual problem because there was a perception that the practice statement doesn't 
carry as much weight as the standards. And it's not important. And we know that a practice statement actually is supposed to provide practical guidance, okay, on how to apply this in what? In practice. That's why it's got the word practice in there. So yes, it, it, they, they know that it's, sub, it's substandard or subservient or below the mandatory IFRS state standards in terms of importance. So that's something that needed to change. And they said to increase the prominence of the practice statements. The standard setters should communicate more about this document, why it's important, circulate it to, to their constituents. I mean, I didn't know about this practice statement before I started research on the project because it's not something that we really look at within South Africa. We've got our auditing standard and that pretty much is, is, is it. Okay. But in terms of an accounting standard, nah, we knew that there was a, yes, something has to be material and we've got to disclose all the material items. It's got to be properly reported on. It is a pervasive principle of the financial statement. So in a nutshell, this is what they said. The research showed, yes, there's a good understanding of the concept of materiality. Accountants understand the concept of materiality. Auditors understand the concept of audit materiality. But it is going to be beneficial to continue raising awareness among the stakeholders about guidance that is issued on this. I mean, who doesn't want guidance? Who doesn't need guidance? So the summary document was important in confirming that, yes, even though everybody understands the principle, everybody needs more guidance and they weren't aware that this practice statement too is actually available as guidance. So let's go and have a look at IFRS practice statement two. Practice statement two is available on the website. Okay. I have also given you the, the link to download the PDF document, but this is uh, what it looks like when I go and follow it. And you'll see I, I am following um, the changes to that. But yes, IFRS practice statement consists of 54 pages and it provides an overview of the general characteristics of materiality. Then it also introduces and it gives us a four step process that an entity can follow when they make materiality judgments when they are busy preparing their financials. So this, the description of the materiality process here provides an overview of the role materiality plays in the prep of financial statements. Yes, so there's a big focus on the factors that the entity should consider when they decide whether or not something is material. And once it's material, it needs to be included in the compiled financial statements and it needs to be what? Reported on properly. Right. So yes, IFRS practice statement two does provide guidance on how to make materiality judgments in specific circumstances. They are talking here about specifically about things like prior period information, errors and covenants, and also in the context of interim reporting. So this IFRS practice statement really has not been utilized properly since it was issued. All right. It's only been issued now in, in 2021, but yeah, they, it, it has been, it's available. And if you look at it now, it's almost like it looks like it's in a draft format because it's not final yet. All right. But yeah, IFRS practice statement two, something that we certainly should be referring to a lot more. The source documents that I've given you there, there's the summaries of the reports, that eight page document. And then there is the actual practice statement two on materiality, making materiality judgments. Right are now a little bit more aware of the materiality judgments and the guidance that's been issued by IFRS on this. So we are looking forward to a lot more from this. Um, so if you do see it coming through in future, please remember where you heard it first. Thank you from my side, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.